Yo, what's up? We're back again this week, and this week it's going to be uh, UFC Singapore. I'm actually going to jump right into it, and uh, the first fight of the night is going to be, potentially, I'm not sure, I actually, not sure if this fight is 100% scheduled or not, I've, you know, tried to figure it out, I've went and looked, I actually messaged them, see if they would respond, but, you know, it's not officially announced, but has been rumored for this event, and, um, I'm just going to go ahead and break it down for you guys. And that fight's uh, Melinda Fabian against ji Young Kim. So we're going to see if this is going to be on the card in the next couple of days. But Melinda Fabian, she's coming off the tough show. She had one fight in the UFC against Deanna Bennett, which was a draw. And she's a Muay Thai striker. She has good power in her hands. Those nice combinations. She has good hand speed in the pocket. She can put her shots together and hurt you. Good jab. Nice straight right hand. Good uppercut as well. She looked on nice leg kicks, has a very good head kick that she dropped Deanna Bennett with. But Bennett seems like she's susceptible to head kick. She got dropped by a head kick um, and knocked out as well on the show by C.R. Eubanks. So. And Fabian doesn't have good takedown defense in space. And off her back, she doesn't have much at all. She was submitted in round one on the show in the clinch. She can be uh, controlled against the cage, but she does have better takedown defense against the cage. But she doesn't pummel and just defends the takedowns with her overhooks and heavy hips. So she can't be, you know, have her back against the cage for prolonged periods of time. She has decent cardio. And she's never been beaten, uh, and she's never beaten someone with a, with a win. So that's a little alarming that, you know, the combined record of the people she's defeated is 0-10. She's a little flat-footed. She doesn't move her head. So she can get hit with flush counters. And she isn't the fastest with her feet, so she can be corralled, put in a clinch, taken down very easily. Not like she has some great footwork. She's hard to, um, you know, get a hold of fighting on the outside. Overall, I'm not extremely impressed with her. I feel she athletically may not be UFC caliber. Um, and for Jihyun Kim, she's also a striker, so I think it's going to be a pretty fun action fight if it does go down. And Kim's a long woman for 125, really abnormal reach. 72 inch reach she's gonna have a six inch reach advantage in this fight and kim has nice hands she'll throw the jab right hand with uh, some pretty good power her right hand has good power she has good footwork backs up circles to try to walk you into her right hand she likes throwing hands in the pocket she'll sit down trust her chin and uh, you know throw down the power she's much better when she gets aggressive and she starts going forward she has good fakes and feints movements cuts off the cage well Walks you down trying to land hard counters and right hands. She's a good uppercut as well. She will throw some leg kicks, but not many. I think she probably should incorporate more into her game. She has been way more experienced than Fabian. She's fought 14 boxing fights, 9 MMA fights. She doesn't go for offensive grappling techniques much. And I don't think Fabian will either. Fabian has submissions, but it gets very low level competition. She has no KO, TKOs. Kim has a couple submissions as well and one TKO, so, you know, for Kim, she already fought in Singapore before in the UFC. She has the more experience here, and um, I think she's going to run away with the decision. I think she'll win a decision 30-27, 29-28. Pretty clear decision on all scorecards there for Ji Young Kim. And up next, we have one of my most confident picks of the night here with Janelle Lauza versus uh, Yuta Oka Sasaki. And, um... You know, a little bit surprised that um, Janelle Lau is getting another opportunity here, but good for him. You know, he's a solid boxer, 7-0 pro boxer. He has fast hands, great slips, good head movement. He'll fire very fast jabs, straight right hands. He'll throw the jab long right straight, then, you know, duck under, move out of the way. Very good at that. Has great footwork. Use that to try to draw you in and counter. He can be inactive, not throw enough at times. He has a good check hook, overhand right. He doesn't throw much in combination. He has a lot of one punch at a time because I think he's worried about the takedowns. He has pretty decent takedown defense. It's improved. He uses good underhooks to deny the entries and disengage. But he isn't the best at chain wrestling. Can get taken down if you flow with your takedown attempts. You know, be a little bit um, resilient, keep going. He's okay defensively off his back. He does a good job of retaining guard, not getting hit with big shots. He'll attack with some short elbows off his back, but he doesn't have a great get-up game, just stays in the guard, loses the fight. He'll go for guillotines and kimuras, but he isn't a great submission artist. He will throw up a head kick, but he's mainly just a boxer and a plus athlete. 
He has never been KO'd or, and submitted only one time, so he is hard to finish. He has cardio problems, slows down in the third round. He also seems to have an urgency and will to win problem. Too complacent, losing fights in the guard off of his back. Just a little bit, um, you know, too complacent for my liking. He's lost two in a row. He's on the chopping block here. So if it's ever a time for him to go for it, it's now. And he's going to be fighting Yuta Sasaki. He's in it. Kind of an eccentric Japanese guy. He's fighting out of Sarah Longo now, so really think that's good. He's been there for quite a long time. He's very tall, long for the division. Dangerous submission game. He's been alternating wins and losses so far, and he's coming off a loss, so he's going to be trying to continue that trend in this fight. And Sasaki has a lot, a lot of experience, very comfortable, knows his strengths in the cage. He is relentless with his grappling when he knows he has the advantage. Done very well against strikers in his career. He submitted, you know, people like Teruto Ishihara, Willie Gage, Justin Scoggins in the UFC. He keeps a very high pace striking, throws a lot of kicks, long punches, nice knee to the body. He likes to strike to try to close the distance to get you to the ground. He has good takedowns against the cage with singles and body locks. He is a pretty good wrestler, good wrestling scrambles as well. On top, he uses his long legs to transition well, tries to get the back at the rear naked choke. He's really a back taking specialist he has a great squeeze he can even finish you over the chin he has very good top control throw hard shots in the mouth for you to give your back all three of his wins in the ufc are by rear naked choke off his back he isn't as good but he does an okay job trying to get you off balance with his legs look for a submission look for a sweep he has a ton of heart he got hit with some brutal body shots against scoggins that dropped him could have quit but he persevered and came back and found the finish he should be able to wear down Lauza, stay in his face, get him in wrestling transitions, just tire him out, man. He may have a problem early, you know, getting a hold of Lauza, but as the fight goes on, I think his entries will get easier and easier, and I think he's going to get the finish. I think eventually he's going to be able to get the back of Lauza, who sometimes gets up a little hectically, giving his back, and um, I think he's going to get the rear naked choke in round three, or in early round two, so I'm going to, or late round two, so I'm going to say... Um, Utah Okasaki, and that's one of my more confident picks of the night there. And up next to a pretty good fight, pretty close fight with um, Naoki Inoue against Matt Chanel. And, um, you know, for Naoki Inoue, he's a very young guy, solid prospect with a pretty great style for MMA in terms of point fighting, in my opinion. Black belt karate, you could see that with his great in and out movement. But unlike most karate guys, he has great hands, crisp boxing, fast hands, a very nice jab. He'll throw a lot of fakes and feints, try to draw you out, counting your shots. He's good at controlling range, controlling the center of the cage. He has a nice one too. He'll double up on a jab too. He'll throw a nice short right hook. He doesn't have KO power, but he has stinging power. You could definitely tell his opponents feel his shots. He has nice kicking technique, especially with his round kicks to the legs, front kicks to the body. He does a good job of throwing a lot of straight punches, a lot of straight kicks. Just trying to stay long. On top of on top of his striking style, is a very slick jiu-jitsu. Almost like a catch wrestling style. Extremely aggressive on top, looking for submission, getting dominant position. He landed ground and pound. Um, pretty good ground and pound. He does a great job of taking the back. And his long, le long legs give him, you know, superb control. Really great control. He's able to float, move from mount to the back. He'll look for rear naked chokes, arm bars. If you take him down, very good at scrambling. He'll usually end up on top. Good at bellying down, getting the single, ending up in top position. He can't get caught coming in with his hands down or exiting, getting clipped. But he is 11-0, never been finished, so you have to admit he has a solid chin. Great cardio, stays very calm in the cage. Never really overexerts himself or has like excess movement. You know, he had a pretty dominant win in his last fight, but I was surprised that he wasn't able to get the finish in that fight. It seemed like he had him in a lot of positions where he could have gotten the finish, but wasn't able to, so maybe he isn't the best finisher yet, especially on the ground. He had, but he had a dominant decision win, and he was a guy who was a pretty good wrestler, and he missed weight for the fight as well, so that has to come into play. That fight was in Singapore, and he trains in Asia, so that gives him an advantage here in terms of acclimation. He's 20 years old. And uh, if he can continue to grow, I think he could be, you know, a future top 15 guy in the UFC. And for Match now, he's a former tough fighter. Bounced back from a three-fight losing streak with a decision win over Mel 
Marco Beltran in his last fight. And he's training out of ATT. Pretty well-rounded fighter. Good Muay Thai striker. Good hand speed. He has a nice jab. Good straight punches. Solid footwork. Move inside. Move inside and out. Good lateral movement as well. Try to explode in with punching combos or throw a leg kick. Um, good defensive movement. But his attacks are very linear, linear and he comes in on straight lines. He will fake and faint. Try to draw out your attacks. But he can be inactive at times himself. Should try to throw more volume. He has a nice check hook. Nice uppercut. He'll throw a head kick. He could sometimes get a little too wild. And uh, brawl or brawl in the clinch or in the pocket. Get rocked. He doesn't have the greatest chin. You know he's been rocked. And um, KO'd Colt twice in the UFC. Questionable takedown defense as well. Very willing to go to his back. He does have a slick ground game. Good guillotine. He'll attack with a nice armbar. Good triangle. He almost got Tim Elliott in an armbar. He'll roll for leg locks as well. But he did get knocked out rolling for a leg lock against Hector Sandoval with, you know, seemed like some really small um, hammer fist, a really short hammer fist. He got broken by Tim Elliott and submitted. And he was taken down by Rob Font. Rob Font took his back. But he did a good job defending and eventually stood up from that position. Chanel is probably the one with more power, but he isn't a heavy hitter either. Only two KOs. And uh, most of his ones are by submission with six. And I'm going to have to roll with Naoki in a way in this fight. I believe he's the more durable fighter in this matchup. Better in and out footwork than Chanel. Better kicks. Will control the distance on the feet. And even if it gets a little hairy on the feet, I think he'll be able to take it to the ground. And um, I think he's going to be able to win with control on top. I don't think he's going to be able to finish that style with any submissions. But I'm going to go with Naoki in a way with the decision victory in that one. And um, he's somebody to keep your eye on. And I'm next to have a fight with Viviani Pereira against uh, um, Chow Nan Yan. And, um, you know, pretty intrigued by this fight. I really think Zhao Nan Yan's a pretty good fighter. And uh, I think that she should uh, not be such an underdog as she is in this fight. You know, she's no joke on the feet. Big power, very aggressive. Uh, she throws full power on every shot. Fast hands, those hooks at combination. She's a start, sharp, stiff jab. She uses that to set up her combinations. Uh, good power to hands or straight punches are also powerful. She leads with her left hook very effectively as a powerful straight right hand. She's a very good lead leg. She'll throw hard stop kicks to the knee, go to the head with the side kick. She has good speed and power of that kick as well. Hard to see it coming. She'll throw a lead round kick too. She's a powerful low leg kick. She stands high in the striking kick. It clinched up, gets the cage or take it down. She had a nice elbow. The clinch gets curved. Really showed her power in that fight. But she did a pubble against the cage. She allowed Kayla to get a lot of uh, control time. And, uh, you know, keep the position with her back against the cage. She was taken down against Courage. She was able to control position, land elbows in round three. And, um, you know, Kern did uh, show some things that she needs to improve in her game. She definitely needs to improve her get-up game. She needs to improve, um, you know, getting away when she's getting held against the, against the fence. Um... She definitely is a finisher, though. She doesn't mind throwing down, taking some shots to give some. And um, has pretty good cardio. She seems like she's a very good um, prospect in this division. And for Pereira, she's a powerful short compact fighter. She is powerful overhead right. She will throw the right hand to the body as well. She'll throw uh, leg kicks, but not often. To me, her striking is not very good. She stands too far on the outside. Very flat-footed. She's an easy target to hit. And I think she'll need to get inside very quickly against Jan. At striking distance, I just think Jan's going to piece her up with punches in her front leg. Pereira's strong at the clinch. She has good body lock takedowns. She has better clinch control against the cage. And um, I think that's where she's going to have to take the fight because on the outside, she's only 5 feet tall. And, um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of volume, doesn't get on the inside very much. I think Jan's going to have a big striking advantage. And um, I actually think she's going to pull off the upset here. I think she's going to have, um, you know, more volume. She's going to be able to um, really dominate the striking. And I think that um, Perez going to be able to control against the cage for periods of time. I think she may be get a couple takedowns. But 
I think Zhang and Yang are going to be the one getting the decision at the end of the fight. I do think it'll be a close decision, but I'm going to go with uh, Zhang and Yang in the upset in that fight. And I'm next to a fight with Shinzo Inza against Jake Matthews. And, you know, I do think that Jake Matthews is the rightful favorite here. But the line, I think, is a little bit crazy. Shinzo Inza is a wild man. He's an uber-aggressive fighter. Really like watching him. He takes big risks on the feet to lay big shots, get inside. He uses a lot of lateral movement. And then when he sees an opening, explode an attack with leaping hooks um, that he throws with full power. He will whip a right overhand, left hook. He can throw them so hard he gets off balance or countered. Very open and basic with his stand-up attacks. He will fake the overhead and go for the level change. Go for singles and doubles or he'll fake the level change, go for the overhead. So that is a little bit of a tricky part of his game. He has good takedowns. He's relentless with his attempts. Does a good job of chaining the attempts together. He isn't the best at finishing the takedowns and keeping his opponents on the ground though. But what he does... He has good top control, heavy ground and pound. He doesn't have much of a submission game. He's actually never gotten a submission before. He will throw some kicks to the legs, occasional kick to the body and the head. He has great cardio, keeps a good pace. He can take a shot, but sometimes he can't overexert himself. He's a dangerous grinder with knockout power. And, um, you know, he can't duck his head sometimes when he's striking. Can get out, kick out with knees and uppercuts. Doesn't have good striking defense, but he does have a good chin. I think that he's a pretty difficult matchup for anyone, man. I think that he's someone that is definitely going to make you come to fight. And for Jake Matthews, he's coming out the best, best performance of his career against Li Jingling. And, um, you know, Matthews is young, but he has a wealth of experience, and he's now 2 0 at 170 in the UFC. Then we looking to get a top 15 opponent with the win here. And Matthews is an athletic, well-rounded fighter. Good footwork, uses nice, nice lateral movement, and then likes to explode forward with a straight right hand or a right hook, and then kind of get out of the way. He has good power on his check left hook. And he showed good power in his last fight. He dropped Jing Liang multiple times, but prior to that, he hadn't shown that kind of power, in my opinion. He had an amazing performance against Jing Liang. It really makes you wonder, um, you know, if he was on any special supplements for that fight, but... Previously, he looked uncomfortable or scared to get hit. He gets Lee. You know, he's asking him to hit him. Extremely pumped. Extremely confident. And he is very young. He's improving. So maybe that's a sign of what is to come. He has a nice double leg top and top control. He's a black belt. He has good chokes. Nice ground and pound. He'll attack with the guillotine. He has gotten out-hustled and out-scrambled in prior fights to the UFC. You know, Andrew Holbrook comes to mind. And he has a problem being too complacent. Be it on top or uh, going to grappling positions, you know, giving them their best opportunity to win. And um, I think that he doesn't want to really engage in a lot of grappling in this fight with Anti unless he's on top. I don't think he wants to engage in the clinch. And um, he's going to what? To use his footwork and move it, keep Anti on the outside at first. If Anti can't get inside and start to make it a dog fight, he could definitely win the fight. I think the odds are a little bit off. But Matthews, by decision, is my pick. I think that he definitely has advantages in all areas. He's better on the ground, better on the feet. But, you know, there's always that chance of him getting broken by uh, the pressure of pace of Shinzo Anzai on that one. And I'm next, you have Hector Aldana against uh, Song Kinan. And um, very low-level fight, in my opinion. You know, not very impressed by either guy. Um... Hector Aldana hasn't fought in like three years. He was a guy that's coming off the tough show. And for Kenan Song, he's a trained out of Jackson Week, so that may help him for this fight. He could be improving, but, you know, he has good striking, good power, fluid hands and kicks, throws solid jabs, has good power on his straight right hand. He'll throw kicks to the legs, and uh, sometimes he'll go up to the head. He has good high kicks. He isn't the most mobile fighter, just shuffles towards you. Very flat-footed, easy to counter. And you could time him if you could move in and out. He doesn't have the greatest takedown defense, and instead he'll just try to get the guillotine. He has an okay guillotine, but if you get out of it, he doesn't have much off his back at all. Just stays in a closed guard. He seems like he's a good athlete. He could definitely get better at his takedown defense and footwork now that he's at a better camp. 
He had a quick finish in his UFC debut against Bobby Nash. Nash definitely has a questionable chin, and that stoppage was a bit premature, in my opinion. And Hector Aldana is coming back after over three years off, like I said. He hasn't fought since tough Latin America, too. Aldana is the prototypical Mexican fighter. He's a boxer, stays in your face, keeps the pace, and uh, likes to go to war. Big power, he'll throw a nice crisp jab, followed by straight, good hooks. Throws in combinations well, changes up his target from body head. He'll attack the body with hooks too, has good accuracy, big power. Very heavy leg kicks, can damage your leg with just one or two kicks. Very aggressive, tries to get inside with head movement right away. He can't get too aggressive, put himself in bad positions or off balance. He doesn't have good takedown defense or jujitsu, and that will be an issue if he continues to fight in the UFC. But not in this fight, I don't think. I think his cardio would not be an issue with him. He's training in Mexico at the Etrim Gym. He's at altitude, so it should help with the layoff. This is actually a close fight, in my opinion. Song and Aldana are both, you know, pretty low-level fighters, just solid strikers. It's going to come down to who lands the harder, better shots. Aldana's a live dog in this fight. And, um, you know, I really want to go with him here, but I'm actually just going to go with Song Kinan by TKO in round three. I think he's going to land a knee when Aldana comes in ducking his head. And, um, I'm going to go with Song Kinan, but one of my least confident picks in that fight. I just don't have much faith in either guy. And up next, another one of my more confident picks of the night was Shane Young against Rolando Dye. And, you know, Shane Young's coming back after that short notice fight against Alexander Volskanovsky. He's a young guy, he's only 24 years old, and he has a very workmanlike professional game. He isn't overwhelming with his power or speed, but he's a very technical fighter, good movement, throws a high volume attack. He's a nice jab, he'll go to the body with it too. Does a good job attacking the body and the head with his punches to change up the target, tire you out. He doesn't throw with full power, he kind of prefers to accumulate a lot of shots, keep you on the outside. He has nice leg kicks. He'll go inside, outside, throw oblique, click, oblique kicks. He has a nice head kick. Does a good job controlling distance on the feet. If you get inside, he likes to take you down. He has good uh, fakes and feints to freeze you and draw you draw your attacks out. And he isn't the most uh, athletic or fastest guy. And that could be exploited at the higher levels of MMA like you saw against Volkanovski. But he keeps a great pace. He doesn't get tired or flustered. He was able to take Alexander Volk Volkanovski the distance on short notice. And now we will get to see an easier fight against Rolando D. And uh, he has never been finished. He has losses to pretty high level competition in Damian Brown, Guang Wang, and Volkanovski. All who are current UFC fighters all have wins in the UFC. He has a good chin, good defense on the feet. Um, he's a pretty solid wrestler. has a great get-up game when he gets taken down. He's going to go to take down D if he ever feels he's in any trouble on the feet, in my opinion. And for Rolando D, D's a boxer. He's going to have the faster, more powerful shots in this matchup. He's been a slow starter in the UFC, but when he gets going, he has crisp boxing combinations, nice kick to the body. He likes to get in the pocket trade punches. He has a powerful left hook and a nice straight. And, um, you know, good straight, good right hook and a nice right hand. He has a good uh, hand speed, finds openings, he can hurt you with big punches. He'll throw the overhand right left hook combo, catches people clean with the left hook. He doesn't do a lot of setup shots, really likes to explode and retreat. He has nice kicks, he will, th he will attack the body the most with the, with the kicks, but he will go up to the head with the kick. He has strong leg kicks, should look for them in this fight as Shane Young's pretty heavy on that front leg. He has good recoverability, he can get dropped, come back and... You know, make the fight competitive. He has good cardio. He can push all three rounds. He has very questionable takedown defense. Doesn't have much off of his back. He will try to get the butterfly hooks, push you off. But if you can cement position, doesn't get up well. Young should be able to dominate the wrestling in this fight. And has a um, jab. And, and, you know, does a good job of dictating range well. He's going to have a three-inch reach advantage in this fight. I think he's that's going to be a big factor on the feet. He's going to have problems with, uh, you know, the distance control. And D has also had problems making weight in the past. He's retired before. So, you know, it's definitely kind of a head case. And, um, you know, Young's uh, going to get his first win here, in my opinion. I think that he's going to be able to 
win a very easy, clear cut decision here against um, Rolando D. And I'm going to go with Shane Young in that one. And up next, we have uh, Felipe Aranches against, you know, the Enigma shot. <laughs> Yang Sedong, you know, no one really knows much about this guy. Seems like he's kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. He's like a, uh, he's like a hidden fighter or something. He's like, I don't know, you know. He's only 20 years old apparently, but uh, if that's true, then he's been fighting professionally since 15 because I've seen fights online, you know, of him fighting in wars in 1FC in 2013 where they're saying he's 20 years old there, so... I've seen people, I've seen them say he's like 21, you know, so it's a little bit weird. I don't know his true age, um, you know, don't, it's a little bit odd, but he is training at Team Alpha Male for this camp, and I'm extremely excited to see how he looks. You know, he's a very solid striker, light on his feet, keeps good pressure, owns the center of the cage. He has a long karate type stance, does a great job leaping in with explosive, accurate punching combos. And getting out. He has a powerful straight and overhand right. Dropped his last opponent with it before getting the guillotine. He has a nice inside outside leg kick and he walks you down. He still does a great job controlling distance, not letting you get in range to wrestle or to land shots. He always has great balance on the feet. He's smooth and fluid with his with his movement. Very little wasted movement. He could sometimes come in on his blitz with his hips square, can get taken down. Doesn't have great ground game off his back. But he is calm, able to defend himself in the guard. Tries to use butterfly hooks to get up to his beat. And uh, can be controlled off his back. That's how he has a majority of his losses. He is very athletic. And he's getting better at denying the takedowns. Getting back to his feet. He has very good cardio. He doesn't really seem to get tired. Unless it's like a three round war. Crazy fights. Like I said, he had an absolute crazy war in 1FC. And uh, he's calm in the fire. He won't quit or back up. He's definitely a warrior. Has a great chin. He's someone who you will want to monitor. He's so young. He has such smoothness in striking. And, um, you know, he's with steady improvements, he could be a future, you know, contender in my opinion. He also has good submission game. And, um, you know, he's really someone that you need to look at, look for. And for Felipe Aranches, he's a Muay Thai striker, a dangerous ground game. Nice leg kicks, good long range striking. He likes to stick on the outside, throw long straight punches or nice round or straight body kicks. He has a good jab, good left hook, solid power, has a few take TKO finishes in his career. Um, very nice head kick, very nice lead knee. He'll throw the lead knee to the body and to the head. He isn't very high output, doesn't have, does a lot of backing up, doesn't control the fight. He does a lot of waiting for his opponents, trying to react to what they're doing instead of going first. He can get back to the gets occasion. His fights on the feet. He doesn't have open mat takedowns and will not go for much. Go for a much, but he does have body locks that he will go for in the clinch. On top, he has good uh, control and uh, heavy ground and pound. He killed God Alfredo Pepe with ground and pound with elbows from top position. He doesn't have good takedown defense, so it's actually very bad. But he is a very good guard. He'll throw out triangles, arm bars. His last two wins have come via submission in the guard. He has lost two in a row. He got dropped four times against Josh Emmett. But he has never been KO'd. So you have to wonder about his chin after that. You know, as it's starting to wane a little bit. He seems to not have the urgency when he needs to go for it. And win the fight. He's just content to survive. And I think that Song has better, more accurate striking. Much more volume. And just tenacity and will to win. I think he needs to avoid... Uh, you know, going in around just his guard. I don't think he has to worry about the takedown much. And I think that Song's going to be able to win. I think he's going to be able to win by a first round or, or early second round TKO finish. Or um, submission like he had in his last fight where it hurts you and finishes him. But I'm going to go with Song Yudong in this fight. I think that he's going to win. And I think he's someone to keep your eye on. And up next, another guy to keep your eye on. And a great fight, man, with Peter Yan against Truto Ishihara. Pretty pumped to see that. You know, debut for Peter Yan. That guy's a... He's a bad motherfucker, man. That's all you could say. He's like someone that's amazing. Um, a well-rounded fighter. Very good in the clinch. Uh, has great knees in the clinch. Great elbows. Very good long-range striking. Nice kicks. Good boxing. He does get hit a little bit, but he has a great chin. Takes a shot to give a shot. Great wrestling as well. Really is a nice, you know, 
blend of everything on the ground. He has great ground and pound. Very elite cardio. He's been fighting a lot of five-round fights over in ACB. He's fought some very good competition. You know, he's beaten people like Magomed Magomedov, who's a very good fighter. Uh, Mateos Mat Matos, you know, he's 12-1. and one. And, um, you know, he's someone to really keep your eye on. I think he's going to come out here and dominate this fight. Truchi Shahar, you know, it is what it is with that guy. He's lost to guys like Artem Lobov. Lost to guys like uh, Gray Maynard in 2017. And, um, you know, for Truchi Shahar, I just don't think that he's the greatest fighter. You know, he got outworked his last fight against Jose Quijonas. He does have a win over against Orlando D. He's in this fight, but... Orlando even got a point taken away. That was a very close competitive fight. And, um, you know, he does have that big power in his in his counter right hand. Very athletic. He can close the distance, land that shot, knock anyone out. It is a possibility, but he seems like he gasses out. Very low volume. Doesn't do much. He will go for grappling. You know, he tried to do that against Orlando D. But against Peter Young, there's no way he's going to be able to grapple with him. And, um... You know, yeah, so I'm going to go with Peter Jan by, you know, dominant decision there and or a late finish in that fight. And I'm next, we have a good fight, you know, with uh, Li Jing Liang against Daichi Abe. And, you know, pretty intrigued by this fight. I think the line's a little off here. I think that it should be a lot closer than it is. Daichi Abe is a striker, powerful hands. He has KO power in both his right and left hooks. He can generate a lot of power from weird shots. He won the Pancrates title with the short left uppercut TKO. He struggles to find range with his hands at times because he doesn't really offer a lot of variety in his striking. He does throw some leg kicks and body kicks, but isn't quite as fluid or dangerous with his kicks. And he and uh, he is much better with his punches. He's a judo black belt. He'll land some cheeky takedowns to steal round at times. He doesn't look for wrestling or grappling much though. He fights first to fight in space. He can get dropped as well on the feet. He doesn't have the greatest striking defense. But he has good cardio, a good chin, good ability to recover. He's a bit static in, in his last fight. But he still showed moments, you know, losing that fight to Luke Jumo. And he's been training with Dwayne Lug Ludwig for this fight. So I would think he's better. He's going to be, um, you know, drilled very well. And the leech going to be a much bigger welterweight. He's won four or five fights. Three by KO, TKO. He has good shots in the pocket, good hooks, takes a shot to give a shot. I think he has a good chin, but it's definitely getting more and more questionable because now he's getting rocked more and more. He got dropped early by, you know, Camacho, got dropped by Nash, um, really got dropped and rocked by Jake Matthews, really got beat up in that fight. He does have big power, straight right hand, throws big leg kicks. He used to be a very wild striker, but now he's more technical, fe feigning, throwing uppercuts throwing uh, counter right hands. He's gotten much better with his head movement. He used to get taken down controlled early in his career, but since he started going to extreme contours, his grappling has improved immensely. Solid takedown defense, good get-ups now. He still can't be controlled by better to elite grapplers, like in his last fight against black belts. He's still about defensively deficient, and um, his chin's definitely getting worse. Um... You know, he cheated bad in his last fight. He had a lot of uh, fouls where he was kind of like raking the eyes of Jake Matthews, doing a lot of questionable things. So, definitely would do anything to win. <laughs> and uh, But I'm going to go with Abe, man. I'm going to say he wins by KO in round two to get the upset. And um, I'm going to go with Daichi Abe there. And up next, another fight that I'm pretty confident with Jessica Rose Clark against Jessica I. Big fan of Jessica Rose Clark. I think she's going to be a pretty good fighter here at 125. And Jessica I is coming off a win in her UFC flyweight debut. But in my opinion, I just thought she lost that fight to Khalidja Ferreira when you go back and watch it. Um, she's a boxer. She's been working out of grappling a lot in recent years. She's a jab. She pops out there, tries to land the straight right counter or overhand right. But she really struggles to find range recently. She could show fast hand speed with her counters, land a 2-3 punch combination. But lately, she hasn't been doing that. And um, she'll throw some heavy leg kicks, but isn't a big time kicker and uh really just have to worry about her hands she does have a lot of weight she does a lot of waiting on her opponents to go first so she can't get countered and um or not can't get countered so she could try to counter she could lose fights just purely on volume she could get tagged and then becomes hesitant 
not commits completely to her punches. Throws like half speed. She likes to be the one moving forward, controlling the center. She can be a bit stiff in long exchanges in the pocket. Can get tagged. She got robbed bad by a head kick against Kalindra Faria. In her last fight, and she was able to recover. She doesn't have great setups on her takedowns, but she has a decent double leg. She'll try to get it clinched, get the body lock. On top, she isn't super active. She can give up position pretty easily, just stand up. She did that against Faria for some reason in the third round. She will attack with leg locks. She's been doing more jujitsu, so maybe she'll try to use it more in this fight. She doesn't have big power. I don't think she can KO Jesse Jess. And uh, she should have some renewed confidence, you know, with the win. She was on a 4-5 losing streak before that. She has good cardio. She comes in shape ready to go. She has been in Singapore for about three weeks, so she has acclimated down there. For Jessica Rose Clark, you know, I do see a lot of people saying Jessica I could be the bigger fighter here. But I disagree with that. I think Jessica Rose Clark is actually going to be the stronger, more powerful physical athlete in this fight. She's fought some big women, you know, 145ers like Pam Sorensen. So she's not going to get overwhelmed or anything by the size advantage. And Clark likes to come forward with the high guard. Does a good job parrying and hand fighting. She's in the police to foot, but she's getting faster now. More explosive. Definitely does a lot of working with John Wood on that. She cuts the cage off well. Throws nice leg kicks. Then um, the leg kicks will be an important thing for Clark in this fight, in my opinion, because eyes very heavy on her front leg. Clark has a nice straight right. Close the distance with good punches. Always throwing in combination with her punches. She has a nice step in knee. Uh, she's strong in a clinch. She'll go for body lock takedowns. Very heavy on top. Like skin and half guard control top position. Look for arm triangles. She does a good job controlling position. Winning the round. And landing good ground and pound to close out the round before the bell. Clark's good at fighting instinctively in the scrambles. She pulled guard. Went for a leg lock. Then transitioned into a double leg against Paige Van Sant. Then later in that round. Got shook off the back. Immediately locked in a triangle. She has a great chin, good cardio, never been finished, doesn't even get look phased by punches. She will be the bigger fighter, mentally stronger fighter in my opinion as well. She's improving while I is declining. And uh, I think she's going to win the decision easily. I think she's going to be able to win the grappling. I think she's going to surprise a lot of people with that. I think she's going to land leg kicks, land counter punching combinations. I think she's going to dominate this fight. I'm going to go with Jesse Jess um, by decision in that fight. And up next, we have Tyson Pedro against Ovin St. Pru. What's going to be a pretty good fight, pretty fun fight at 205. Tyson Pedro is a very fluid striker, very tricky striker. Use a lot of feints, a lot of movement. Try to throw you off, try to see what you're doing, read openings. He's definitely dangerous with his knockout power. Solid right hand, high kick. Has great kicks, very fluid uh, kicks to the legs, kicks to the body and to the head. Very fast, nice knees to the body. Will go high to the head with the knee as well if possible. He has low calf kicks. Should be effective in this fight. He has solid takedown defense. And actually has some solid good grappling himself. He gets double legs. Also being able to get up get up and scramble. He had a close fight with Alir Latifi in his you know, two fights ago. And he definitely had a good performance. But he was grinded out. And um, you know, Ovid say Pru is dominated by Alir Latifi. He was able to get up off bottom early. He showed very tricky stand up. He was uh, he submitted Khalil Roundtree with a rear naked choke after getting blasted and dropped. In his last fight, he had a nasty Kimura finish. He has a calmness about him and good chin, good cardio for 205. Definitely interesting prospect, especially in a shallow division. And OSP is a long rangey striker, very unorthodox striking style as well. He has his hands down. He likes to square up, so he has power in both hands and uh, almost turn his back, attack from odd angles. Tries to lull you to sleep. Tries to look away, land shots. He'll explode forward with a nice straight left hand. Throws hard body kicks. He's a southpaw. Likes to throw that kick to the body. Then switch it up to the head. He can't get bullied at times. Move backwards toward the fence too much. St. Prue's a much better counter striker than he is as the aggressor. Lands a nice long reach each straight right hooks. Solid jab. When he leads sometimes, uh, he looks a, little, looks a little sloppy. Throws himself out of balance. Doesn't throw many combinations. He'll go for one shot kill shots most of the time. He has a nice snap kick to the body. And his kicks have really big power. He broke Ryan Jimmo's arm with the body kick. 
Uh, Pedro's adept at switching stances, and I believe he'll go southpaw as well this fight to take those kicks away. OSP is a strong double leg takedown. He's strong in the clinch. He can muscle guys, reverse, get trip takedowns. Good job defending the shots if you don't set them up with his takedown defense. Has a nice sprawl, but when uh, he's lunging with wild punches, he's much easier to take down. I think Pedro will definitely be able to time that. St. Peru has some tricky jiu-jitsu. You know, he has some rare submissions. Has a calf slicer, three Von Flew chokes. You know, two of his last four fights have finished with a Von Flew choke. Got rocked and choked out by Leila Latifi in just four months ago. Really got hurt bad before he got choked out. Got choked unconscious. And uh, I think he's coming back a little too soon. I think Pedro's going to do a lot of fakes, a lot of feigning. Try to make um, Ovitz go first. Try to draw out his attacks. Try to make him get a little sloppy. And I think he's going to make him get sloppy. Make him go first. Take him down. I think he's going to get a rear naked choke in round two. Going to go with Tyson Pedro by that one. And uh, up next here, Leon Edwards against Dallin Cerrone. This is going to be my most confident pick of the night here. I'm going with Leon Edwards. And uh, Leon Edwards is surging in the welterweight division. He's looking to jump in the top 10 with a win over Cowboy here. Very professional fighter. And while this is his first five-round fight, I feel like he's someone who's built for five-round fights. He's won five in a row, so definitely coming in with a lot of momentum. Very surgical on the feet. He could fight going forwards or moving backwards. He's a southpaw. He's a nice straight left hand. Nice body kick. You know how Cerrone uh, struggles with those body kicks against southpaws. Um, he has a very fast and tight one, too. Good power. He's fast. Does a good job of landing, not getting hit. Very good defensively. He rarely gets hit clean, man. If you look at a lot of his fights, look at a lot of the stats, he's barely gotten hit at all. He's a nice high kick. And uh, has a nice high kick KO in the UFC. Good inside, outside leg kicks. He needs to be moving forward in this fight, throw the body kick, try to back Cowboy up. And, um, you know, he's fought a lot of very good strikers, a lot of dangerous strikers so far in the UFC. You know, he's fought guys like Vicente Luque, who you've seen how dangerous that guy is. Albert Tumenov, gotten victories over both guys. Actually got a finish over Albert Tumenov. Um, you know, actually won a round against Kamaru Usman. Uh, beat a grinder like Peter Sabata. Beat another grinder like Brian Barberina. So, definitely know that he's been tested. He has a very nice grappling game as well. Very strong body locks. Does a good job of getting them when you close the distance on the feet. Good chain wrestling, shoots good double legs, really does it to change up the pace, change up the, you know, if you're getting momentum on the feet, you'll get the double, change up the rhythm of the fight, never let you get comfortable. Um, you know, nice uh, left hook knockdown against Peter Sabata he had. And on top, he likes to hold position, earn top control time. He will um, advance position if he can, but he isn't overly aggressive on top. Can get stood up, has happened in the past. He's never been finished. He's a younger guy, closer to their prime in this fight. He has great cardio. That definitely could be a weapon. Extremely confident and with the win. He's going to put himself in the mix, you know, with the new blood at 170. He's definitely fought a lot of guys with very good guards. You know, Peter Sabat is a black belt um, with, by Dean Lister. He had a very tight arm bar against Leon Edwards. You showed how Leon Edwards was very calm, was able to get out of that arm bar. And it didn't deter him from continuing to fight on the ground. He just dominated that fight on the ground as well. And, um, you know, so I don't think he's going to be overly worried or have to worry about. I think he's going to be, more importantly, he's definitely going to be worried about it because you have to be stupid not to be worried about Cowboys guard, but he's going to be ready for it. But Cowboys coming off of a win. Uh, but you still have to wonder if he's at the end and stage of his career. You know, he's the type of guy who never took his career super serious, always just in the off season doing you know, extreme sports, doing a lot of weight board in the middle of his camps, kind of a guy that takes any fight any time, didn't need a camp, and, uh, you know, maybe that's starting to come back to him now that he's 36 years old, this is going to be his 44th fight, and he had a good matchup in his last fight against Yancey Medeiros, and Yancey was coming off a war with Oliveira recently, and he still, you know, looks a little bit off in that fight, if you ask me, he took a lot of shots. And Cowboys took a lot of punishment in recent years. This could potentially mark the end of Cowboys, a top 10 guy, in my opinion, if he takes a loss. But make no mistake, man, Cowboy Cerrone's still a bad motherfucker. Throws really nice kicks. Uh, you know, the most uh, head kick knockouts in UFC history. Very nice leg kicks. Nice body kicks as well. 
In boxing range, he doesn't seem nearly as comfortable as kicking range. If you could start walking him down, pushing him back, that's always been his problem. Struggled against Nate Diaz, uh, Jorge Masvidal, Darren Till. You know, the list goes on. But he has a solid jab, good right straight, good knees in the clinch, good elbows. More durable to the body at 170, it seems. He's been using a lot of takedowns more recently. Solid takedowns, you know, good double legs. First position over submission on top until you leave an opening, and then he's very opportunistic. Um, you know, nice front leg side kick, stomp kick to the leg, you know, Jackson Wink style. Stabbing front kick to the body. You know, fluid hand combinations. He uses takedowns to almost disguise a step in knee. Sometimes he'll throw the step in knee after he gets denied the shot. Even follows that up with the head kick. Off his back, very solid. Has a bunch of submissions, throws triangles, own plot, his arm bars. Extremely active off his back. Definitely has a questionable chin, you know. Got finished twice by George Boswell. Um, got finished very badly by Darren Till. Got finished against R or RDA to the body. But he's definitely taken a lot of uh, punishment in recent fights. And, um, you know, he's definitely got pucked out before by fighters such as Nick Diaz, George Boswell pre-fight. I don't think Edwards is going to be coming in there looking to be his friend at all. I think Edward just seen the brute plant. I think that he's a very, um, you know, brash, very confident guy. But he puts the work in, you know. Definitely he's a workhorse. And um, I think Leon Edwards is going to be ready for this moment. I think that he's going to seize it, man. I think that they're putting Leon Edwards in a good position here. I think he knows that. I think that he's going to be getting the sixth fight win streak, get the sixth fight in a row for him. I'm going to go with Leon Edwards. I think that he's going to be able to get the job done. And I think it's going to be inside the distance, too. I'm going to go with Leon Edwards by third round TKO via ground and pound. And um, for Don Cerrone, I don't think it marks the end for him. I just think Leon Edwards is a very good fighter. I think he's very good. So I think Don Cerrone could put on fun fights, you know, be a gatekeeper for the top 15. But maybe take a step back from fighting the top five to top ten names. And, um, you know, for Leon Edwards, it's going to be a chance for him to... Uh, Announce himself and maybe get a fight with someone like Darren Till, someone like Kamaru Usman, get a big time fight here. And even though he already fought Kamaru Usman, so maybe not Kamaru, but you know, a big time fight. And, um, you know, guys, for uh, the part of the week, I'm going to go with um, with Yuta Saki, Oka Saki, and Leon Edwards. And I um, think that's a very nice parlay. I think that has a very good chance of hitting. And uh, like I said, my most confident pick of the week is going to be Leon Edwards. We've actually hit that six weeks in a row with the UFC, um, you know, fight night and pay-per-view cards. So that's very cool. And, um, you know, we're, we're, I'm going to be giving you guys the Dana White Contender Series um, one tomorrow. I'm still going to do that one. We went perfect 5-0 and on that one. But I don't really want to talk about the results of the Dana White Contender Series fight. So this show, I'll keep that to the... To the video tomorrow, I'll go over the event for that um, Data Walk Tinder series and go over how we did last Tuesday. And, um, you know, another parlay that I think could be a pretty good parlay for you guys potentially could be Jessica Rose Clark, Shane Young, and Song Yudong. That would be, you know, a parlay that could get you guys some pretty good money. Um, I think that Daichi Abe is a very good underdog. If you want to pick him, I would pick him by KO TKO. Um, you know, I think that. Zainan Yan definitely is a good underdog. I actually may place a bet on it myself. I think that, you know, that line's a little off. And um, definitely think there's money to be made here. I think that, um, yeah, I think that it's a pretty good card. You know, you definitely have to wake up early for it. It's going to be in Singapore if you're in the United States like me. So that's going to be a little bit of a drag. But, um I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be doing, the, like I said, the Dana White Tender Series video, so check that one out. And um, then I'll see you guys for, uh, you know, uh, what International Fight Week. That's going to be fun. You know, Steve Bay versus DC. Can't wait for that one. Been thinking about that one. Already started the tape for UFC 226. So um, hopefully we can keep it rolling, you know, seven weeks in a row. That would be amazing. And uh, hopefully I get to 400 subscribers for this um, video. So please subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys have a great day.